so in this lecture we will be discussing the second half of uh, inventing traditions in our last lecture we read the first part of the essay and in the first part we uh, discussed certain very important things including the definition of traditions as given by eric hobsbawm in which he emphasized that traditions are uh, practices which have a general acceptability and recognition in our society he defined them defined traditions along these lines that they are a set of accepted rules they have a ritualistic and a symbolic nature okay. they function through reputation and they aim to inculcate certain values and norms of behavior in the subjects of the society so uh, the main point of departure was that uh, uh, according to hobsbawm traditions are number one of recent origin okay. they are not as old as they claim to be and uh, secondly in many cases they are invented and third they have a very defined social function uh, i will dwell on three or four lines along which we can you know, understand and look at traditions number 1 uh, traditions are sets of practices as i said which have a social function one okay, which have a general acceptance and recognition in the society this is the first level at which we can understand and uh, approach traditions secondly uh, hobsbawm tries to link the notion of tradition with historic past okay according to him traditions regularly appropriate the past okay we can say this in another way that traditions seek to find their justifications in the past okay there is always a tendency to establish a continuity with a historic past okay so this will we we will try to link this with some other ideas that we will take up today but the main thing is that according to hobsbawm number 1 uh, traditions are of recent origin okay they are not as old as they claim to be okay but they appropriate the past in order to uh establish a sense of continuity okay this is also a way of you know justifying change as natural and not arbitrary okay. the third level at which we can approach traditions okay, is that traditions as far as their social role and function is concerned are linked with the idea of invariance or some kind of you know constancy in change okay it is a it is a part of human nature that we always resist the idea that change is sudden that the change is arbitrary on the other hand human societies in our collective psychology we are more amenable to the idea that change is something okay which occurs according to a system so as i was saying traditions are linked with the idea of invariance okay our social life particularly in the modern times is characterized by rapid changes and innovation so the one of the important functions of the various traditions that we found operating around us is that traditions posit social change as natural 
and as historical and not as arbitrary and sudden. Okay? In simple words, uh, traditions aim to explain change logically that if uh, society is changing, if the world around us is, uh, is undergoing transition, okay, it is happening because of a logic within this change. So this is the one of the main functions of religious, social, political traditions to which we all are subject. Lastly, at the fourth level, we can look at tradition as a regulatory practice. Traditions have a regulatory function as they generate a fidelity and an allegiance to political institutions. Okay? Uh, important political institutions, whether of the past, like kingship and monarchy, or of contemporary nature, like nations and nationalisms, take the support of traditions in establishing themselves and in establishing their authority. Kingship cannot function in a vacuum in, at an abstract level. Traditions are those practices of a concrete nature which help generate allegiance towards these political institutions. Okay? So, as I was saying, at a fourth level, we can say that traditions have a regulatory function as they generate a fidelity or allegiance towards important political institutions like kingship in the past and nation and nationalism in the present. This takes us to the next point in this uh, essay. The next point relates to the three different ways in which uh, traditions emerge or come into existence. Uh, this is discussed in uh, the the part of this essay, starting with the following lines. Inventing traditions, if it is assumed here, is essentially a process of formalization and ritualization characterized by reference to the past, if only by imposing repetition. So you see, he is uh, reiterating the relationship of traditions to ritualization and to uh, repetition and also to a free and very systematic appropriation of the past. However, he says, the actual process of creating such ritual and symbolic complexes has, been, has not been adequately studied by historians. Most of it is still rather obscure. It is presumably most clearly exemplified where a tradition is deliberately invented and constructed by a single initiator. So, uh, one of the ways in which traditions can emerge or come into existence is when they are invented by a single person, as in the case of Boy Scouts by Baden Powell. Secondly, now this is, he adds here that such traditions are easily traceable, most easily traceable. Then, uh, sometimes they are officially instituted and planned ceremonials. Okay. Uh, as in the case of Nazi symbolism and Nuremberg party rights. The second way in which traditions can come into existence 
is through the through the uh, very systematically planned uh, actions of social groups and political parties. So traditions can also begin in planned ways through ceremonials instituted by political and social groups in order to propagate their ideologies. So political and social groups, political parties okay, may initiate traditions related to you know, the memory of their leaders or in other ways which aim to propagate their ideology. These traditions, Hobsbawm says, can also be easily traced. However, it is most difficult to trace the origin of those traditions which evolve slowly over a long period of time, particularly uh, those traditions which have their beginning, their inception okay, in the activities of small groups at local levels. Okay. So some traditions originate at local levels. Okay. Uh, they are initiated in the actions, okay, in the activities of small groups. Gradually, they may become popular okay, because of uh, the adherence of larger and larger number of people. So such traditions, Hobsbawm says, are most difficult to trace. Okay. Three ways in which traditions come into existence. Now we come to the next but very important part of this essay or this is this I would say deals with the reappropriation of the past for okay, use in traditions related to nation and nationalism. We all know that during the last 200 or 300 years, the world did not only become more and more industrialized, but the phenomena of nation and nationalism okay, reorganized the political setup of the world. Nation and nationalism uh, became the most accepted forms of social organization. So, while alluding to the rise of industry and the emergence of new traditions in the past 200 or more years, Hobsbawm says first that the more rapid the social change, the more uh, rapid is the emergence of tradition. So one, he has already said, we discussed it in the first part, that uh, traditions come into existence first and foremost as a response to social change. The faster the pace of social change, the faster will be the emergence of traditions. And see how he links this with the rise of industry, with the rise of industrialism and nation and nationalism during the last 300 years. So let me quote. However, we should expect it to occur more frequently. That is invention of traditions. We should expect it to occur more frequently when a rapid transformation of society weakens or destroy, destroys the social patterns for which old traditions had been designed. So when there are changes in the nature of the society, old traditions 
may become irrelevant they may become obsolete at such times you need new sets of practices with new symbols okay. and with new energy and power to you know, to bring about some regimentation in the society so he says when a rapid transformation of society weakens or destroys the social patterns for which old traditions had been designed when when society changes the old traditions lose their meaning or they become relevantly okay, less important they have lesser justification in the eyes of the people now it is a time when new traditions are needed in order to support new institutions and new balances of power so when the balance of power shifts in the favor of the bourgeois after industrialism after industrialization and after the society is reorganized along the lines of nation and nationalism we need new traditions which are supportive of nation and nation so this is what we have actually seen as far as the progress of history is concerned during the last 200 years new traditions numerous new traditions which are supportive of uh, nation and nationalism have come into existence most of these traditions uh, exhibit all those characteristics which were there in the earlier traditions like they are sets of practices which have a general acceptance and recognition they have a symbolic and ritualistic function okay but most importantly they also lay a claim to the to past particularly the historic past and claim a continuity okay so in simple layman's language we can say that all the nations and nationalisms which have come into existence during the last 100 years okay a uh, claim to be the outcome of very old histories and this contributes to their acceptance among the people this enhances their power and authority this uh tendency to present themselves and dress themselves up as uh, having their basis in uh, historic past helps them become more acceptable as institutions as systems of social organizations so i was reading from this part of the okay? however we should expect expect it to occur more frequently when a rapid transformation of society weakens or destroys the social patterns for which old traditions had been designed producing new ones to the, which they were not applicable or when such old traditions and their institutional carriers and promulgators no longer prove yes sufficiently adaptable and flexible and after this something i was just referring to such changes have been particularly significant in the past 200 years and it is therefore reasonable to expect these instant formalizations of new traditions to cluster during this period. so uh, there is a clustering of traditions new traditions uh, during the last 200 years this as i have said is linked with uh quite you know he makes it quite clear here that such changes have been particularly significant during the last 200 years so these are linked with the changes that have been experienced in the society as a result of 
industrialization all over the world and the reorganization of society along the lines of nation nationalism the emergence of nation and nationalism as the most powerful ideologies all over the world okay and uh, now we come to a very very significant point it seems that the essay is gradually through its various arguments okay, uh, trying to arrive at a very important uh, point which is that nation the the traditions which come into existence during the last 200 years in the aftermath of the rise of industry and nation and nationalism are significant and different in two ways one they are less invented traditions and more are traditions which are linked with a reappropriation of the earlier traditions adaptation took place for old uses in new conditions and by using old models for new purposes more interesting from our point of view i am quoting from the text more interesting from our point of view is the use of ancient materials to construct invented traditions of a novel type for quite novel purposes a large store of such materials is accumulated in the past of our society and an elaborate language of symbolic practices and communication is always available so whether it is religion or it is king kingship monarchy or it is some feudal practices okay. all these things begin to uh be used in the service of the traditions supportive of the institutions of nation and nationalism so there is as i said a transformation of religion of history sorry reappropriation of religion of civilizational past okay, for of the traditions of kingship as in the case of england okay, in england the english nationalism is considered to be a natural extension of the english monarchical history it is seen in continuation with that in india we see our nationalism as a continuation of our civilizational past and as again an extension of our religious belief systems so he gives us many examples about how and this is not some this is a universal experience how religions history civilizational past everything uh, came to serve the ideas of nation and nation how if all these institutions underwent transformation so uh, we had you know legal systems earlier in traditional societies which which functioned as custodians of feudal laws local laws they become they are expanded and take the forms of courts which now act as custodian of national laws 
there is a blending of religion and nationalism at various places and old kings and queens the history of old kings and queens is again appropriated and uh, and used freely to uh, to uh, you know carry forward the ideas of related to the his ancient roots of nation and nationalism so but in the end he also gives us a small list of some new traditions which are invented so uh he refers to the yes let me read uh from the last sections of this essay it is also clear that entirely new symbols and devices came into existence as part of national movements and states such as number 1 the national anthem okay of which the british in 1740 seems to be the earliest two the national flag still largely a variation on the french revolutionary tricolor evolved uh, between 1790 to 1904 or the personification of the nation in symbol or image either official or unofficial so the myths of motherland fatherland we also link our nationalism with the idea of bharat mata so these are some of the uh, new ways in which national traditions take form thank you